Hello, everyone. Welcome to BCG Health. Today, we will be talking about how to boost the immune system from COVID-19. COVID-19 has terrified the whole world right now. Where the first wave proved to be deadly for many and left its mark on many, the second wave is even more dangerous. Many countries are shut down, different theories and more shapes of corona are getting discovered, and it's getting on everyone's nerves. Whereas becoming panicked is not the solution. The solution is to stay safe, take proper measures, and build your immune system against this deadly virus. In this video, we are going to tell you exactly what diet and supplements should be added to your daily routine to fight it. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to watch more amazing content. First of all, no matter what, maintain your hygiene standards. Properly wash your hands frequently. If you are traveling or grocery shopping, keep the best alcohol sanitizer with you. Disinfect your hands now and then. Keep wearing the mask religiously when you are in public, even while meeting friends and family. Attending events maintaining the distance. Cover your mouth and nose and avoid physical contact as much as possible. The more you stay far from the germ, the more you will be able to save yourself from this disease and its worst repercussions. People who are already facing diseases like diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and respiratory issues are at a higher risk of having COVID-19 complications. Moreover, elderly people should take all precautionary measures more seriously as they get seriously affected by this disease. It also aggravates with age as the general immunity reduces as you get older. In the younger generation with no underlying illnesses, COVID-19 can result in a minor infection, provided you have a robust immunity and don't engage in activities like smoking, drinking, etc. Here is a list of measures you can undertake to improve your immunity. Now the next thing that you have to do is start eating healthy. The only thing that builds your immune system is what you eat. And while eating, keep in mind that you have to keep yourself safe from every disease while staying at home. Junk food and overeating can cause obesity, blood sugar, blood pressure, etc. So eat wisely, which is eating a low carb diet, which will help slow down diabetes and focus on a protein rich diet to keep you in good shape and regularly consume vegetables and fruits rich in beta carotene, ascorbic acid, and other essential vitamins. Foods like mushrooms, tomato, bell pepper, and green vegetables like broccoli, spinach are also good options to build resilience in the body against infections. You can also eat supplements rich in omega-3 and 6 fatty acids for your daily dose if stepping out to buy groceries is not an option during social distancing. Some natural immunity supplements include ginger, gooseberries, and turmeric. These superfoods are common ingredients as well as known as foods that are vital for fighting bacteria. Moreover, some herbs have been tried and tested since ancient times, famous for boosting immunity like garlic, basil leaves, and black cumin. Seeds and nuts like sunflower seeds, flax seed, pumpkin seeds, and melon seeds are excellent sources of protein and vitamin E. Probiotics like yogurt, yakult, and fermented foods are also excellent sources to rejuvenate the health of gut bacteria. The better the gut bacteria, the better the nutrient absorption of the body. So never compromise on gut health as well. Don't compromise on sleep. Another most important thing that makes or breaks the immune system is a good, peaceful sleep. So always religiously follow the seven to eight hours of sleep to help your body build immunity. Lesser sleep doesn't only leave you tired, but also impair your brain activity. The lack of sleep will prevent the body from resting and this will impair other bodily functions that will have a direct impact on your immunity. Lack of sleep even adversely affects the action of the flu vaccine, so sleep is highly important. Stay hydrated. Another thing that plays an important role is staying hydrated. So deliberately make an effort to drink up to eight to 10 glasses of water every day to stay hydrated. Hydration will help flush out the toxins from the body and lower the chances of flu. If drinking plain water is difficult, then drink juices made of citrus fruits and coconut water, etc. Don't skip on exercise. Exercise is also a good way to increase your immunity. When you follow a good diet with an exercise routine, it acts as a cherry on the top. 
Hence, exercise regularly. Even light exercise will go a long way in releasing the toxins from your body. It is recommended to exercise 30 to 45 minutes depending on your stamina. If you have not started exercising yet, then it is a good time to start. If you are unsure of how to exercise regularly at home, you can follow the channels on YouTube or download apps according to your liking. Regular exercise improves metabolism, which in turn increases body immunity. Moreover, what's wrong with shedding some pounds while staying at home? De-stress yourself. The pandemic brought tough times. Staying at home, away from friends, and the normal life, especially if it's away from family as well, can be pretty hard. But hold on, don't let this time demotivate you. Rather, find things that can make you happy. Find some hobbies, read books, play games, learn cooking and baking, etc. Just do whatever makes you feel good. Practice meditation. Meditation is one of the best activities that can be practiced to stay calm and peaceful. Too much stress releases the hormone known as cortisol, which impairs your response to immediate surroundings and makes your body susceptible to infections. You are left feeling constantly anxious. The best way to relieve stress is through meditation. It calms the nerves, relaxes the mental stress, and betters the immune system. If you need help meditating, then you can check out the guided meditations available on YouTube channels and apps. Avoid smoking alcohol and other addictive substances. There is a reason they say these things are injurious to health. They mainly kill your immune system, your power to fight viruses. Habits like smoking, vaping, alcohol consumption, and substances weaken body defenses and make you prone to respiratory illnesses. Smoking and vaping are proven to weaken your lung capacity and destroy the cell lining of your respiratory tracts. These cells are crucial to fight viruses that enter through your nasal orifices. There is new research claiming that individuals who engage in heavy alcohol consumption tend to suffer from ARDS, Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, which is one of the conditions caused by COVID-19 infection. Thus, try to live a healthy life and avoid all these things to build a better immune system. You have always heard that traveling is very important for growth, exposure, and mental health. But in this pandemic, try and avoid all kinds of non-essential travels. As we all know, most COVID-19 positive cases are imported cases, which later spread to the communities. This is why, if possible, avoid traveling in a public transport system and public places to avoid any likelihood of exposure. In case you can't avoid that, follow all the SOPs and make sure to cover your nose and mouth with a mask and carry an alcohol-based sanitizer at all times. Sanitize your hands each time you touch a surface as COVID-19 strain can stay on surfaces for a few hours to days. Use your non-dominant hand while accessing the doorknobs and handles as these are frequently touched by many people. You can also take full advantage of winters by wearing gloves and staying away from a virus. Now, when we are done with all the basic details, let us address another main thing that will help you build your immune system. What are supplements and immunity boosting foods? No one can deny the importance of the things we have said till now. But right now, the need of the hour is a quick boost to your immunity system to keep it fighting fit, which may not be possible with these food items, etc. So to get the right amount of nutrients, consult with your doctor about a supplementation regimen to boost your immune system. These are a few common yet proven supplements and superfoods that can help build immunity. Vitamin C. This particular vitamin is a crucial participant in the process of building immunity. It helps prevent the common cold. It acts as a powerful antioxidant and protects against damage induced by oxidative stress. For severe infections, including sepsis and acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, high-dose intravenous vitamin C treatment has been shown to significantly improve symptoms in patients. Vitamin D3. Almost 70% of the population lacks vitamin D3 without even knowing it. Vitamin D3 supplements have a huge protective effect against respiratory tract infections. So it's best to consult with a doctor before taking a vitamin D3 supplement to boost immune response. Zinc. Zinc is a vital component of WBC, white blood cell corpuscles. 
which fight infections. Zinc deficiency often makes one more susceptible to flu, cold, and other viral infections. It is advisable to take a zinc supplement, especially for older people. You should always check with a doctor to know the right amount according to your age and weight. Elderberry Elderberries, though, are not so famous but are full of nutrients including minerals like phosphorus, potassium, iron, copper, and vitamins such as vitamin A, B, and C, proteins, and dietary fiber. Elderberries have antibacterial and antiviral qualities that help fight off cold and influenza. If you take one tablet regularly, you are likely to fight all kinds of viruses without much effort. Turmeric and Garlic the bright yellow spice, turmeric, contains a compound called curcumin, which boosts immune function. Garlic has powerful anti-inflammatory and antiviral properties that enhance body immunity. And at the end of the video, I would like to give you some small tips and tricks that will help you in boosting your immune system better. Drink warm water throughout the day. Practice meditation, yoga sauna, and pranayama. Yoga is also one of the best practices to keep your mind off all the stress and worries. Increase the intake of turmeric, cumin, coriander, and garlic. Drink herbal tea or decoction of holy basil, cinnamon, black pepper, dry ginger, and raisin. Avoid sugar and replace it with jaggery if needed. Apply ghee, clarified butter, sesame oil or coconut oil in both the nostrils to keep the nostrils clean. Inhale steam with mint leaves and caraway seeds. Remember that fighting this battle against COVID-19 is only possible when we limit our exposure to the virus by staying indoors, social distancing, eating healthy, hydrating, and following basic hygiene protocol. That is all for now, guys. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to watch more amazing content. Fresh parts of the plants called herbs and dried parts known as spices are most often used for flavoring and seasonings. But do you know that spices can do wonders to your health? In our today's video, we are going to talk about some common spices that are having miraculous health properties. So let's get into the video and see which herb is having the most powerful health benefits. Hello everyone, welcome to BCG Health. Today we are having a lot of spices in our kitchen and we even forget to use them. But in the Middle Ages, spices were as precious as gold and other gems and were only used by the rich people of society. Back in those days, a single pound of saffron would cost as much as a horse. A pound of ginger was worth of a sheep, and two pounds of mace was as expensive as a cow. I'm referring to these animals because in medieval ages, animals were more expensive, like cars and big houses these days. Reason for these higher prices was not only the cost of transport but also their potential health benefits. In this video, we will discuss 12 different kinds of spices and herbs, including black pepper, cloves, cinnamon, chia seeds, mint, saffron, rose petals, cardamom, coriander, rosemary, and sage, along with their benefits and how they add flavor to your food. Before we begin, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for regular updates. So let's get started. Black pepper. Black pepper, the most common spice, comes from peppercorns and is often deemed as a king of spices. It's popular for its antioxidant properties as well as its effectiveness against chronic medical conditions like cardiovascular diseases. It helps in digestion of food as well as increases the absorption of nutrients like calcium and selenium. Black pepper, due to the presence of a compound called piperin, is able to fight with the free radicals that are produced during exercise and when we eat food consisting of fats and oils. They damage your cells and actually cause aging at cellular level. Black pepper not only helps in lowering bad cholesterol, but also scavenges free radicals. For people who eat fatty food a lot, 
shouldn't hesitate to sprinkle some black pepper powder to create a balance in their food. But if you're having some kind of kidney stones, don't overdose black pepper as they are loaded with oxalates and they also increase your calcium absorption, which is good otherwise but not for kidney patients. Thyme Delicate looking but having the strongest fragrance, thyme is used for many purposes in cooking and medicine. Thyme is primarily used for its antibacterial and anti-inflammatory properties, which makes it best for beauty purposes. Thyme oil is effective against acne and cures it by fighting with bacteria that are responsible for causing acne. Thyme is also antifungal, so it's great in fighting against fungi that causes dandruff. Applying thyme oil to your scalp not only improves the blood circulation, but it also clears out the dirt or dandruff that has accumulated in your scalp and is blocking nutrition to hair. Good proportion of vitamin C in thyme also makes it great for skin. You can use thyme oil on your skin as well as for your hair growth or attaining desired hair thickness. Thyme oil can also be used to make thyme tea as it's a natural remedy to cough and even chronic respiratory tract infections. Cloves Cloves are native to China and are used worldwide for their exceptional health benefits. Strong brown color of cloves is due to the significant amount of beta carotene they contain, making it great for eye health. Now back in those ages, when people were not familiar with anesthetics, cloves were popular for their use against toothache and other body pains. It was later discovered that cloves are natural anesthetics as they contain eugenol which helps in easing tooth pain. Eugenol is now widely used in dentistry for its anesthetic properties. If you occasionally have toothache, you can directly place cloves on the affected teeth and it will relieve your pain in seconds. Cinnamon Cinnamon basically comes from the bark of a cinnamon tree that grows up to 60 feet. It was previously used as a natural food preservative due to its antibacterial properties. Cinnamon is being studied for its anti-diabetic effects. It mimics the action of insulin and improves insulin resistance in people with type 2 diabetes. It also interferes with the digestive enzymes and regulates the amount of glucose entering in body cells after a glucose-rich meal. Cinnamon can be ground to powder and used in tea as well as sprinkled on toast. Chia seeds Chia seeds can give you sheer amount of nutrients with a few calories. They are incredibly high in fiber, protein and minerals like calcium and magnesium. To make it clearer, take the total fiber of banana which is 6 grams in 200 grams of mashed banana. While for chia seeds, it's almost 10 grams of fiber in just 2 tablespoons of chia seeds. If you're having constipation, chia seeds can be of great use as they bind 12 times more water than their weight and form a kind of soluble gel or fiber which gives bulk to the stool and also increases the lubrication. Drinking chia seeds soaked in water can do wonders to your health and you'll notice the change in a week or so. 17% of your daily recommended calcium dose can come from chia seeds from only 2 tablespoons. It's also rich in phosphorus and magnesium which makes it an excellent supplement for bone health. Mint Mint has been used throughout the history for several health benefits. It has a fresh yet pungent flavor and aroma that is extremely soothing to the senses. That is why people have been using it in dishes, medicines, for stomach problems, weight loss and much more. Now there are various types of mint with different properties including antioxidant qualities. It is used for the gastrointestinal issues including indigestion, irritable bowel syndrome, bloating, 
and feelings of sickness after surgery by working against microbes and relaxing the muscles. It also helps control inflammation in such cases and it is known to reduce the symptoms of asthma due to the presence of antioxidant and anti-inflammatory compounds. Mint also contains menthol, which is an aromatic decongestant. This helps in clearing up phlegm and breaking up mucus and making it easier to get rid of. We can also use the stems and leaves in cooking as the stem causes the flavor to be more potent. Saffron Saffron is an extra vegan herb to add to your daily routine. It is said to have numerous benefits and each thread is harvested by hand, which is why it's one of the most expensive spices in the world. Now coming to its benefits, it contains antioxidants just like in mint that help in relieving oxidative stress and inflammation in the body. Oxidative stress causes many types of cancers and cardiovascular diseases, so antioxidants can help to prevent that. Saffron also helps in improving mood and relieving depression. Studies show that taking 30 mg of saffron each day has the same effect on alleviating depression as antidepressants. Saffron has also been widely popular in reducing the appetite which then aids in weight loss. It has medicinal properties like antibacterial and anti-inflammatory which can be used for treating acne and breakouts. Now it's important to know how much saffron you can take in a day without having any side effects. You should take up to 1.5 grams of saffron each day, but more than 5 grams is considered to be a toxic dose. Rose Petals Rose petals are often treated casually, but they can be the best choice of herbs you'll ever make. They have a soothing fragrance along with many positive health benefits. Now starting with benefits, they are rich in vitamin C, which when applied to skin can cause dry skin cells to vanish and provide you with fresh, firm and soft skin. Vitamin C does this by improving the collagen production of skin, which gives skin a youthful glow. Coming back to the scent, which provides you relaxation when going through rough time, and instantly cause your moods to be lifted. This is why rose fragrance is used in many essential oils and soup bars. We already have talked about how it's good for our skin, but they also have anti-inflammatory and antibacterial properties which reduces acne and pimples. Rose petals can also known to help with common cold due to decongestant antioxidants present in it. These antioxidants also help in improving any digestive issues. These really cheap petals can do wonders to your health, so waste no time to add them to your morning and night routine in the form of rose water or fresh rose petals. Cardamom Cardamom is a spice which has been used immensely in Asia for decades. Cardamom has a lot of anti-inflammatory compounds which protect cells against damage, which is actually a cause of inflammation. Studies have shown that cardamom can lessen inflammation up to 90%. Cardamom helps in fighting heart diseases as well due to the antioxidants present in it. It also helps in lowering blood pressure and prevents cancer formation. They also have a diuretic effect, which is eliminating excess water that builds up in your body. Cardamom is also being used as a remedy for bad breath and improving oral health by eliminating bacteria from your mouth, hence chewing a piece may not be a bad idea. It helps in relieving discomfort, nausea, vomiting and is also known to heal ulcers. Coriander Coriander is another herb used in Asian culture quite frequently. It is filled with vitamin K, which helps cure osteoporosis and clots blood. It also has the effects of diuretics and lowers bad cholesterol, which is due to the presence of antioxidants. This helps the body process sugar better and has the blood sugar lowering effect.
so diabetics should add this in their diet. Coriander can be freely added to any vegetable or meat curry just like regular vegetable leaves. It adds fragrance as well as extra nutrition to the meal. Rosemary Rosemary is basically used for treating type 2 diabetes and improving lipid profile and insulin resistance in humans. It should be taken in a controlled quantity which is 2 grams per liter of water in a single day. Which means rosemary should be diluted and you can add small amount in other beverages. Studies have shown that consuming controlled amount of rosemary reduced BMI and waist to hip ratio. It's a good option to take when you are dieting as it helps in weight loss. Sage Sage has shown improvements in mood, mental function and memory. It also improves your health and clears plague which is crucial for your oral health as well as improving sore throat. It also eliminates cancer risk with a compound called cornisole which can kill several types of cancer cells without affecting healthy body cells. Sage is sometimes used to treat nausea in pregnant women, hence taking it during and after pregnancy can help you greatly especially if you're losing weight through intermittent fasting. It may also reduce hot flashes in menopausal women. That's all of today. These were 12 herbs and spices that you can add to your daily routine. But remember not to add them together. You can use few at a time. In an average Indian family, 6 to 7 herbs are used on a regular basis while cooking and 25 herbs on special occasions. Let us know in the comment section which was your favorite herb and spice and which herbs you're already using. Turn in for another video on obesity health and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Welcome guys to BCG Health. Today we'll be talking about which milk is more healthy to consume, either the goat milk or the cow milk. Milk is considered to be one of the most vital nutrients that should be included in everyone's daily routine. But with more and more options in our nearest supermarkets, it is getting difficult for people to choose which milk suits their needs and which milk is healthier. Two kinds of milk are in competition. And people are confused whether goat milk is better than cow milk or not. So in today's video, we have decided to explain you the both kind of milk and when you need to consume them. So keep watching the video and don't forget to subscribe to the BCG Health. The products made by goat milk are widely available in the market and are used by people like Chevra and Feta cheese. But have you ever tried drinking the goat milk? Yes, goat milk is now also available on aisles for drinking. But what's the difference between goat's milk and cow's milk? Some people who are supporters of organic food have drawn their attention to the needs for goat milk. Cow milk has been used for ages and is used to make other foods. It seems a little difficult to select the best products, so let's get into the detailed nutritional elements of both kinds of milk. Though goat and cow milk can be easily incorporated into the diet and offer a range of valuable macro and micronutrients, goat milk confers some additional health benefits and may be an ideal choice for supporting digestion. Milk is made up of water, lactose, fat, protein and micronutrients. Now both kinds of milk have almost the same macronutrients but they are different. Goat milk has several unique properties when compared to the cow milk. While cow milk has been the choicest source in the western world for centuries and remains a healthy option for many, goat milk is increasingly becoming the favorite for all health conscious consumers because of its naturally easy to digest composition. It is also the most consumed milk globally. These are the few reasons that goat milk does not cause any respiratory digestive and dermatological symptoms for many people, whereas cow milk is heavy and difficult to digest. Nutrient Content If you look at the nutrients, one cup of goat milk provides 
140 calories and 7 grams of fat, whereas the amount of cholesterol at 24 milligrams or about 8% of recommended daily value based on a 2000 calorie diet. Another mind-blowing quality of goat milk is that it's low in sodium and carbohydrates and high in protein and calcium, providing 8 grams of proteins and 30% of the recommended daily value of calcium per cup. Fat Content In goat milk, the fat globules are smaller and have a greater surface area than those found in cow milk. Smaller globules are more easily and efficiently worked on by the pancreatic lipase, the fat digesting enzyme. Levels of the short and medium chain fatty acids are significantly high in goat milk than cow milk. Triglycerides with medium chain fatty acids enjoy particularly fast and efficient digestion and are excellent source of energy. Moreover, the levels of omega-6 fatty acids are higher in goat milk than in cow milk. Protein Content The protein in all milk is composed of relative amounts of microproteins. When you drink milk, the protein causes it to curdle in your stomach. Alpha S1 casein is a milk microprotein that determines the structure of the curd. The level of alpha S1 casein is 50% lower in goat milk than in cow milk. This means that a softer and easily broken down curd is formed. Beta lactoglobulin is the more easily digested milk microprotein. There are three times as many beta globulin in goat milk than found in cow milk. Vitamins and mineral content Both goat and cow milk are rich in a range of vitamins and minerals, while levels of vitamin A and D and the minerals calcium and selenium are higher in goat milk. Vitamin B12 and folic acid are found in greater amount in cow milk. Some studies have also shown that the absorption of several minerals in goat milk is higher compared to the cow milk. Acidity and Alkalinity While cow milk is slightly acidic, goat milk is alkaline. Alkaline diets result in more alkaline urine pH. The alkaline diet has many advantages in itself. One of these advantages is that it prevents against cardiovascular, neurological, and muscular health issues. Cow milk It is well-known fact that cow milk is a good source of vitamin D and calcium. It is less expensive and easily available in the smallest stores near you. Moreover, Fresh and pure cow milk is also preferred to balance your meal or your snacks. The nutritional benefits of cow milk are endless. Milk given by healthy cows is one of the essential nutrients, calories, minerals and vitamins. Cow's milk is included in people's daily diet and has been around for millennia. While it's still a popular food, recent studies suggest that cow milk may have some harmful effects on the body. Having said that, one serving of cow milk consists of 150 calories, 12 grams of carbohydrates in the form of lactose, 8 grams of fat, and 8 grams of protein. Whole milk One full cup of cow milk has 3.25% of milk fat and is also a good source of vitamin D. It has 149 calories and about 7.9 grams of fat and 4.6 grams of saturated fat. Whole milk contains 7.7 .7 grams of protein and 11.7 grams of carbohydrates. Whole milk has zero fiber content and 28% of DV calcium. It contains 8% DV vitamin A and about 31% DV of vitamin D. Low-fat milk Low-fat milk is often consumed by adults and has 2% of milk fat. It provides approximately 122 calories. The low-fat milk has 4.8 grams of fat and 3.1 grams of saturated fat and about 8.1 grams of proteins. The milk also has 11.7 grams of carbohydrates and zero fiber. 
The calcium content in milk is 29% DV calcium, 9% DV vitamin A, and 30% DV of vitamin D. Low-fat cow milk has 102 calories with 2.4 gram fat and about 1.5 gram of saturated fat. Low cow fat milk has 8.2 gram of protein and about 12.2 gram of carbohydrates and zero fiber. The milk has also 31% DV calcium and 10% DV vitamin A and 29% DV of vitamin D. Other cow's milk has the same amount of carbohydrates and proteins with some or all of the fat removed, while whole milk has 150 calories in one cup, 1% milk has 110 calories, and skim milk has just 80 calories. Definitely these calories are heaven if you're giving them to the kids who need weight gain. Some as if you're trying to lose weight, cow's milk is going to not be a good choice. Fat-free milk is significantly lower in calories than whole milk. However, the removal of fat decreases the number of certain nutrients in the milk, including the vitamin E and vitamin K. Lactose-free milk is processed to break down lactose, a natural sugar found in milk products. Lactose-free milk is also a good source of protein, calcium, vitamins and minerals. The total and saturated fat content of lactose-free milk vary as it contains in 2%, 1% and fat-free varieties. Pros of Cow's Milk Whole cow milk provides essential proteins, healthy calories from fats as well as vitamins and minerals. As recently many people have objected to the lactose properties of cow milk, thus lactose-free versions are also available for people who have lactose intolerance. Cow's milk, if properly fed with grass and low heat pasteurized options, is the healthiest choice of the consumer and is easily available in grocery stores and convenience stores. Cons of cow's milk one of the disadvantages of cow milk is if you want to lose weight and include milk in your daily diet, cow's milk can't be one as it is high in calories and fat. People with diabetes or lactose intolerance should not select cow's milk as it has a high quantity of lactose in it. Some of the owners are not feeding cows properly, so people can have ethical concerns about modern dairy farming practices and they may avoid cow's milk due to this reason. The final takeaway Well, there can be no perfect champion as people here will choose according to their needs. In our opinion, cow milk is the winner when it comes to the delicious milky taste, it's cheaper than goat milk and easily available whereas goat milk is more expensive and less common in grocery stores. On the other side, goat milk is very easy to digest due to its magical molecular structure. It has less lactose and is best for those who want to include milk in their diet without eating too much calories. Both kinds of milk are healthy, but if dairy doesn't suit your stomach in place with your digestive system, then you should give goat milk a try. Cow's milk and goat's milk provide similar amount of 9 essential nutrients calcium, potassium, phosphorus, protein, thymine, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin A and vitamin D. Although due to the vitamin and mineral content in both milk, the cheese made from them are taken differently when it comes to allergies, food intolerance, digestion, weight loss and heart health. Go to goat's milk if you've been diagnosed with a cow's milk allergy or you are lactose intolerant or have trouble digesting cow's milk. Goat's milk may be a safe alternative for those with a cow's milk allergy because of the different types of proteins in each types of milk. Of the various proteins in cow's milk, casein, particularly alpha S1 casein, seems not contain the same alpha S1 and allergic reaction. As for the lactose intolerance, goat's milk has less lactose than cow's milk, so it's easy to be tolerated. Moreover, 
Goat's milk contains smaller globules of fats, which are easier to digest, so there's less bloating and discomfort. Goat milk is also beneficial when it comes to weight loss and heart health. Compared with the cow's milk, goat's milk contains more medium-chain fatty acid, which along with the diet of whole grains, plenty of produce, and protein that's light on fat increases the metabolism and burns stored fats. Goat milk is every dietitian's favorite food right now. Also, goat's milk supplies about 30% more heart-healthy, monosaturated fats than cow's milk. That is all for now guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe to BCG Health for more amazing content. Welcome to BCG Health. Today we'll be talking about how to detox your body and how exactly you're going to feel after doing a detox. Stay tuned to the video and make sure to hit the bell icon for our latest updates. What is a detox? Well, the word detox simply means to remove toxins out of your body. Now, there are no such things like toxins in our body, but these are some harmful substances that have accumulated our time in our body and they need to be cleansed. It's basically a kind of physiological reset that your body goes through during a detox diet. In a detox diet, you fast for a specific time which is followed by a diet of fruit, vegetables, detox juices and water only. And sometimes, a detox also include herbs, teas, supplements, and colon cleans or enemas. When your body has a lot of toxins, it starts reacting in different ways, and thus you need to detoxify it or cleanse it. Through fasting, you kind of rest your organs. It cleanses your liver to get rid of toxins and renew its functions. Detoxification eliminates toxin through feces, urine and sweat, and it improves blood circulation. And now we all know that the food we eat in our daily life, such as high-fat foods, can produce many free radicals or toxins in our body. And we all know that these are hazardous for our health and lifestyle. Therefore, detox therapies are highly recommended especially when you start seeing the symptoms like obesity, etc. and your liver starts showing the signs of toxins in the form of autoimmune diseases, inflammation, allergies, bloating and chronic fatigue. Detox diet helps with all these problems and kinds of restart your system to live a healthy life. How to detox there are many different ways to do a detox diet and that include 24 hours fast to a few food additions and modifications in the daily diet. So the first option is complete fasting for 1 to 3 days. Only water is allowed in this detox. The second way to detox your system and especially the liver is by drinking only fruit and vegetable juices, smoothies, water and tea. Drinking salted water or lemon is also beneficial while detoxing. Taking supplements or herbs to detoxify is the least common but can be proved beneficial if you are doing it right. Exercising regularly is the best way to detox all the bloating related problems. But remember, none of this can work until you eliminate alcohol, coffee, cigarettes and refined sugars from your diet. How effective is detoxification? So far, almost all of the people who have ever detoxed their system have given positive reviews. They think due to detoxification, they felt more energetic and active while performing their daily chores. If you're using the detoxification supplements, they can also be the reason for feeling fresh, as you may also be getting vitamins and minerals that you were lacking before. Effects on Weight Loss According to a research, detoxification can have a huge impact on weight loss if it is done with the right ingredients. But weight loss differs from person to person, so some people may lose a lot of weight quickly 
and others find the changes in their body affecting them after a long time. The reason being some time you lose weight is due to the loss of fluid and stored carbs. According to research in Korea, where overweight women were tested by the lemon detox diet, significantly reduced body weight, BMI, body fat percentage, waist to hip ratio, waist circumference, markers of inflammation, insulin resistance and circulating leptin levels, making it one of the most effective detox diet ingredients. All you have to do is use a mixture of organic maple or palm syrup and lemon juice for 7 days. Detox Diets, Short-Term Fasting and Stress Short-term fasting, which means fasting for a few hours every week, may improve various diseases including the blood pressure and insulin sensitivity. Detox diet may help with short-term weight loss. Another famous way of fasting is intermittent fasting regimes, which can improve the overall health and health problems. How to Detoxify Limit alcohol. Alcohol is the most toxic substance that gets stored in your liver and starts causing the problems like fatty liver etc. Liver enzymes basically metabolize alcohol to acetaldehyde, which is a chemical that causes cancer and is extremely dangerous. If you detox your body from alcohol, your liver will convert it to a harmless substance called acetate that is later eliminated through urine. While some studies say that drinking low to moderate alcohol is beneficial for heart health, excessive drinking can be a reason for thousands of health problems. Above all, it can severely damage your liver function by building fat, inflammation, scarring and even cause cancer. In case the liver is damaged, it won't be able to function properly, including filtering waste and other toxins from your body. Therefore, decrease alcohol consumption or, if possible, completely refrain from drinking alcohol. Focus on sleep Quality sleep is the basis of a good life. 6 to 7 hours of sleep can refresh every system of your body. Whereas, the lack of this 7-hour sleep can be a nightmare for your body's health and natural detoxification system. We all know that sleeping allows our brain to recharge itself. When you rest properly, your system automatically refreshes itself. And it is one of the best ways to detox your body from unwanted toxins. Sleep deprivation can cause many brain diseases that are Alzheimer's disease, depression, obesity, and bipolar disease. Moreover, stress, anxiety, high blood pressure, heart disease, type 2 diabetes are also partially the effect of poor sleeping patterns. As the body has not rested properly, cannot perform all these functions. So toxins build up and affect several aspects of health. Thus, make sure that you sleep at least 7 to 9 hours per night regularly. Drink more water. Water is the natural medicine to all health problems. You name a disease, it can be cured by increasing the water intake. It regulates your body temperature, lubricates joints, aids digestion and nutrient absorption, and detoxifies your body by removing waste products. The increased water intake washes all the organs and flushes out all the chemical toxins out of your body. This is because water transports these waste products by efficiently removing them through urination, breathing or sweating. So staying properly hydrated is vital for detoxification. The adequate daily intake for water is 125 ounces or 3.5 liters for men and 91 ounces or 2.7 liters for women. You can increase or decrease water intake according to your needs. Reduce your intake of sugar and processed foods. Sugar and processed foods are the root cause of all health problems. The processed sugar and processed food is a kind of poison that has taken a place in every household's item. If you realize how many problems sugar and junk are creating, you would not even touch it again. 
High consumption of sugary and processed foods cause obesity and other chronic diseases such as heart disease, cancer and diabetes. These diseases hinder your body's ability to naturally detoxify itself by harming organs that play an important role such as your liver and your kidneys. For example, high consumption of sugary beverages can cause fatty liver, a condition that negatively impacts liver function. By consuming less junk food, you can keep your body's detoxification system healthy. Replacing junk food with healthier choices like fruits and vegetables is also a healthy way to reduce consumption. Eat antioxidant-rich foods. Antioxidants protect your cells against damage caused by molecules called free radicals. Oxidative stress is a condition caused by excessive production of free radicals. Your body naturally produces these molecules for cellular processes such as digestion. However, alcohol, tobacco smoke, a poor diet and exposure to pollutants can produce excessive free radicals. By causing damage to your body cells, these molecules have implicated in several conditions such as dementia, heart disease, liver disease, asthma and certain types of cancers. But antioxidants obtained from food are more beneficial than those that are in supplements. Those antioxidants that you get from supplements can increase your risk of certain diseases when taken in large amounts. Vitamin A, Vitamin C, Vitamin E, Selenium, Lycopene, Lutein and Zeaxanthin are the best antioxidants that are present in berries, fruits, nuts, coca, vegetables, spices and beverages like coffee. Some of the green tea also have the highest amounts of antioxidants. Eat foods high in prebiotics. All of your body's system depends on gut health, which is very important for keeping your detoxification system healthy. Your intestinal cells have a detoxification and excretion system that protects your gut and body from harmful chemicals. To keep your gut healthy, eat foods that are high in prebiotics, which is a type of fiber that feeds the good bacteria in your gut called probiotics. With probiotics, your good bacteria can produce nutrients called short-chain fatty acids that are beneficial for health. The good bacteria in your gut can become unbalanced with bad bacteria from the use of antibiotics, poor dental hygiene and poor diet quality. Eating foods rich in prebiotics can keep your immune and detoxification system healthy. Food sources of prebiotics include tomatoes, artichokes, bananas, asparagus, onions, garlic and oats. Decrease your salt intake. Detoxifying retained water of the body is also very important as it causes obesity and high blood pressure. The reason for these problems can be consuming too much salt due to the fact that you retain excess fluid especially if you have disease that affect your kidneys or liver. This excess fluid buildup can cause bloating and in return you will look fat. So if you realize that you are gaining weight and also consuming too much salt, quickly start detoxifying the extra water weight. Now, if I tell you how, you would be amazed. To detoxify retained water, drink as much as water you can because the salt accumulated in your body will leave through urine once you drink water. Increasing water intake will result in your body regulating the secretion of antidiuretic hormone through urination, eliminating more water. You can also increase your intake of potassium-rich foods that absorb sodium and detoxifies your body automatically. These foods include potatoes, squash, kidney beans, bananas and spinach. Get active! No matter how much your weight is, exercising regularly is the best way to live a long and healthy life. The benefits are unlimited. It detoxifies your body, keeps you away from heart disease, diabetes, blood pressure, cancer, fatigue and much more. 
So after your one to three days detox is complete, you're going to feel both mentally and physically cleansed, more focused and alert and obviously very active. Results depend on how well you did the whole process, but it's overall a very refreshing process that improves your overall health. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this content and let us know in the comment section when you're going to detox your body. Inflammation is a pretty common term that everybody seems to be talking about these days. But did you know how much impact inflammation has on your body? And what happens to your body if you start taking these anti-inflammatory teas every day? Watch this video till the end and you won't regret it. Inflammation is not primarily harmful to our bodies as it's the body's natural response to harmful entities like viruses and bacteria. So apparently, inflammatory response is necessary for our body's health. But inflammation is not always good for our body and that's what we need to learn in our today's video. Inflammation has two types, acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation happens when we are attacked by viruses or bacteria like in flu and acute bronchitis. But chronic inflammation occurs when our body starts killing our own body cells like beta cells that produce insulin are damaged by our own immune system which then leads to diabetes mellitus. Chronic inflammation also leads to diseases like arthritis, obesity, stroke, peptic ulcers, active hepatitis, and even cancer. Chronic inflammation accounts for more than 50% of total deaths worldwide. There are a number of different known and unknown causes to inflammation like obesity, stress, lack of sleep and self-medication. Chronic inflammation is also stimulated by unhealthy components found in food like trans fats, sugars, and synthetic sweeteners that produce free radicals in our body. Free radicals cause oxidation of cells and release harmful components that result in inflammation. However, it can be a bit harder to change your whole diet plan. So in our today's video, we are going to discuss 8 anti-inflammatory teas and how to make them in a way that you'd love to drink these teas. Otherwise, like most people, we don't want you to get filled in making these teas your lifestyle. Drinking these teas after a fat-rich diet can reduce fat and sugar absorption and improve digestion. If you're above 40 or obese, you'll love the results of drinking these teas every day. So let's begin with our first tea. Number 1. Ginger Tea Ginger contains many potent anti-inflammatory agents that help in many conditions caused by chronic inflammation. Ginger contains compounds that help to lower bad cholesterol in our body. It has also been proven to minimize inflammatory markers including the most powerful cytokines and C-reactive proteins that initiate the inflammatory response in our body. Ginger is also effective in indigestion and nausea. Recent studies show that ginger helps in GI tract inflammation and makes our gut healthier. Ginger tea is also recommended if you've got mild inflammation and pain in your body after strenuous workout or hectic daily routine. Consuming a cup of ginger tea before going to bed will make you feel fresher and energetic next day. To make ginger tea, boil freshly peeled ginger pieces with lemon and add some honey after cooling it. This is just to keep the taste of honey. Maple syrup can also be added in this tea to make it tastier. However, make sure you're using original maple syrup that is not too high in sugar. Number 2. Turmeric Tea Turmeric tea is number one option when it comes to mild inflammation that causes pain after injuries or some mild infection like fever and cough. In fact, turmeric powder has been used in countries like India since centuries to speed up wound healing. It is still used as an ointment in these countries. 
A research published in Medical Journal of Food has claimed that turmeric can be as effective as pain medication in treating joint pain and arthritis. Turmeric contains powerful anti-inflammatory compounds called curcumins which is also available separately as capsules and is used to treat many medical conditions involving inflammation. However, curcumins need black pepper for their absorption. So you should use black pepper and turmeric powder in combination. To make turmeric tea, boil the turmeric with black pepper alone for 5 to 10 minutes so that its smell goes off. After cooling, strain the yellowish water and add lemon and honey to make it tastier. You can drink plenty of turmeric tea as we need 5000 mg of curcumin every day to get these anti-inflammatory results. Number 3. Green Tea Green tea is another popular tea against inflammation and obesity, both of which are interlinked. Researchers show that green tea contains ketogens that reduce inflammation and joint pain. It is also good for heart health, with heart being one of the most targeted organs of our body that gets harmed by inflammation. So, if you are obese and also have high cholesterol levels, drinking green tea would do wonders to your health. Preparing green tea is easy but don't boil it for too long to get the darker green color as most of the people do. This will make your green tea bitter and you won't be able to consume it. Boil green tea for 3 to 4 minutes until it has a light greenish color. Number 4. Fenugreek Seeds Fenugreek seed tea has been used since centuries for its incredible properties in curing digestive tract problems like constipation, ulcers, and loss of appetite. Fenugreek seeds contain alkaloids in them that are capable of blocking sensory receptors that cause sensation of pain due to inflammation. During a study done in 2014 that involved 51 women, who had painful periods were given capsules of fenugreek seeds for two consecutive months. Women who used these capsules had lesser duration of pain and lesser inflammatory signs during their periods. Fenugreek seed tea instantly soothes throat by maintaining the mucus in lungs and is very effective in easing congestion. Fenugreek seed tea is also effective in treating lymphatic blockage. Lymphatic blockage can cause many problems like water weight and poor blood circulation and ultimately it causes swelling and even inflammation. Fenugreek seeds boost sweating and urination in such cases and cleanse our body of trapped toxins and waste. You can use fresh fenugreek sprouts as well as lymphatic cleanser. However, don't use fenugreek seed tea if you're on medication, going to have surgery, or going to have some dental work. This is because fenugreek seeds can affect clotting ability of blood and increase the risk of bleeding. Now coming to the preparation of fenugreek seed tea. Take 1 tablespoon of fenugreek seeds and crush them a little to let the nutrients come out of seed. Now take 2 cups of water and boil the seeds for 20 minutes. Keep the flame low and add some honey after boiling it. Number 5. Rose Petal Tea Rose Petal Tea has been a part of Chinese traditional medicine. Interestingly, rose petal tea is caffeine-free and has more antioxidants than green tea. Rose petals are calorie-free, rich in vitamin C and vitamin E, and has significant amount of iron. Anti-inflammatory properties of rose petal powder are compared with anti-inflammatory medicines like ibuprofen. By promoting bile production of liver, it also helps in digestion in people with hindered bile production. Rose petal tea has been used traditionally in India and China to relieve pain from arthritis and menstrual cramps. However, Rose petals can cause mild allergies in some people with specific health conditions. Also, rose tea may not be good for people who are taking antidepressants and blood thinning medicines like aspirin. Best part about rose tea is its sensory properties and its sweet aroma 
that improves mood and relaxes mind. You can boil a handful of rose petals in water at medium flame for 5 minutes to make the rose tea. Boil them until they get discolored and water turns pink. Strain the water and add honey in it. You can have rose tea during menstrual cramps and body pain. It's going to work as fast as medicine. Number 6. Cinnamon Tea Cinnamon tea is very strong and has powerful antioxidants. Antioxidants are good for our body and protect us from cell damage by free radicals. However, an excess of antioxidants can cause cancer as they can stop our body from eating disease cells too. So when using cinnamon tea, don't exceed its dosage as it acts like medicine and only a pinch of cinnamon powder is enough to make tea. Now coming to its benefits. So far teas that we've discussed are for mild inflammation like flu, menstrual cramps and GI tract inflammation. But cinnamon tea also helps in chronic inflammation like diabetes, cardiovascular diseases and inflammation caused by obesity. But cinnamon tea also helps in chronic inflammation like diabetes, cardiovascular diseases and inflammation caused by obesity. Anti-inflammatory activity of cinnamon is attributed to the presence of high amounts of polyphenols that reduce inflammation by scavenging free radicals and inhibiting the formation of prostaglandins. Anti-inflammatory activity of cinnamon is being compared with NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Since NSAIDs may cause severe gastrointestinal discomfort, scientists are considering the compounds found in cinnamon as an alternative for NSAIDs as a safer option. You should use cinnamon tea if you are diabetic, have high blood cholesterol and obesity. All these conditions can be treated by using cinnamon tea regularly. Cinnamon tea can be prepared by boiling one cinnamon stick in water for 10 minutes. You don't need to strain the water, just add a little honey for a sweeter taste. Number 7. Hibiscus Tea Hibiscus tea is liked for its strong pink color and sensory properties. Its pink color comes from a polyphenol called as anthocyanin. These polyphenols are associated with lowering high blood pressure in both men and women. In several studies done on blood pressure lowering effect of hibiscus tea, it was suggested that taking 3 cups of hibiscus tea every day for a period of 2 weeks or longer had significantly lowered the blood pressure. It has also been used in many African countries since long to treat common fever, cold and sore throat. Although hibiscus tea has not been reported to decrease bad cholesterol, it does increase good cholesterol which is hard to maintain in older people. People. So, consuming hibiscus tea regularly reduces the risk of cardiovascular diseases. You can get ready to drink hibiscus tea from market, which can be served hot or iced. Number 8. Olive Leaf Tea Olive leaf tea might be rare, but it has tons of benefits just like olive oil or olive fruit. Olive leaf extract are even available as weight loss supplements and for its other benefits. Scientific studies show that oleuropurin found in olive leaf can reduce the size of fat-storing cells and thereby reducing the fat mass in the body without affecting the protein mass. Another compound called hydroxotyrosol found in olive leaf extract was responsible for reducing the risk of heart disease by scavenging free radicals involved in oxidation of low-density lipids. Oxidation of LDL or low-density lipids releases cholesterol in blood, causing blockage of arteries over time. Olive leaf tea is not less than a medicine in hypertensive and diabetic patients. It also reduces liver enzymes called ALT and AST, which when found in blood indicate compromised liver function. 
To make olive leaf tea, you need 5 to 10 leaves of fresh olive or a tablespoon of dried olive leaves. Boil them for 2 to 3 minutes in hot water and add honey as a sweetener. You can drink as much as 2 glass of olive leaf tea as a preventive and curative measure against chronic inflammatory diseases like atherosclerosis, arthritis, and type 2 diabetes. Anti-inflammatory teas can be a good alternative for painkillers and NSAIDs. If you often feel tired with body pains, these teas can help you. But most of all, a good sleep helps inflammation more than anything else. This is because our immune system is active during night and body cells are repaired during night when we are sleeping. Also, avoiding anti-inflammatory foods is super important to see the results of these anti-inflammatory teas. I hope you've learned much from today's episode. Let us know in the comment section if you want us to do our next videos on any of your favorite topics. Ring the bell icon to see our latest uploads first.